So now I want to talk about demand hot water. And I thought I would actually, I, I have personal experience with demand hot water, not that I put in demand hot water systems or anything like that. So I thought I would bring a demand hot water heater to show, so you at least know what it looks like. They come in various sizes and shapes. I think almost everybody knows what a traditional hot water heater looks like. So most people, at least that I know of, have a water tank in your basement. You keep the water tank heats your water all the time. And then when you turn on your faucet, the water that's in your tank that's been heated all day <coughs> comes through your hot water system. Well, demand hot water works quite differently. So basically, what a demand hot water system does it's sim it is that you have no tank. So that you are not heating water 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <coughs> so all you have in your system is cold water. So when you turn, the only thing that triggers turning on the hot water, or tur to turn on this heater, is when you turn on the hot water. And this is sort of like a series of coils that go through the box, sort of like a coffee maker is the way I like to think about it. So in a coffee maker, basically you turn, push a button, the, you have cold water sitting in a reservoir, and then the, re then the water goes through the coils. By the time it gets to the end of the coil, you have hot water to make your coffee. So that's essentially what a demand hot water system does, does as well. So when you turn on your hot water in your house, it tells the demand hot water system to start to turn on. So the cold water that's coming into the system goes through the coils, and then it has to go to your sink. So you can either get a system for your entire house, which is what we ended up doing, and this is a system for the entire house. So the, on the only problem with that is that it takes a, a little bit of time before you turn it on until it gets to whatever sink you're at. So if, for instance, the sink that we have right over the basement where the hot water system is takes maybe five seconds we have hot water. But if you're taking a shower upstairs, I just timed it this morning. It took about 40 seconds before I turned the faucet on and I got the hot water. Now you can get, it's unlimited hot water. Because as long as you turn your faucet on, this is turned on and will continue to heat water. So unlike a tank, where you only can use the tank and then it has to heat again, demand hot water actually gives you unlimited hot water. But there, you are not heating water all the time, so you're only heating water when you use it. So it can save a lot of money as a result. And some people have heating uh, hot water systems too, they're linked to their furnace, so they ha you actually have to have your furnace running in the summertime in order to heat your hot water. So that eliminates this possibility as well. So you can say, and the other option if you don't want a, a hot water system for your entire house, is you can put smaller heaters on every sink that has hot water, every sink that you want to have hot water, or like your dishwasher, or like your washing machine, or those kinds of things. So you have smaller hot water systems all through the house for every, every sink that you want to turn the hot water. And then you'll have quicker hot water than the one that's in the basement. That's the only downside, is it does take a little bit of time if you get a system like this. Um, so, most uh, people who deal with hot water systems can put in demand hot water. They basically, you can use, you have various sources of fuel that can fuel the hot water system. So we put an electric hot water system. This is particular one is electric. The problem with the electric hot water system is you have to have enough, because it uses a lot of electricity in a short period of time, you have to have enough electricity potential in your house in order to use this hot water system. So in general, you have to have like electric heat um, or a, that level of electricity. The standard house probably wouldn't have enough electricity. You'd have to do an electricity update if you want to get an electric hot water system. But they make demand hot water systems that run on propane, that run on natural gas, and some places in the country that you get them that run on oil as well. So you can get a demand, you can get a um, demand hot water system in various uh, fuel choices, depending on what fuel you're using in your house for your other 
needs like your heating or your stoves or those kinds of things. And usually you can find a demand hot water system that will work um, with whatever you need in your house. So you say that a demand hot water system will work for heating the house? No, it does not heat the house. It only heats the, but if you, for instance, if you heat, if you have a, a natural gas burner in your house and you're doing forced hot air or whatever, then you can use that same natural gas for a natural mm -hmm. gas electric, I mean like natural gas demand hot water system. Mm -hmm. Or if you're using propane, maybe you have a propane stove. <clears throat> then you can use propane and, and have a demand hot water system that uses propane. <clears throat> and they're supposed to, there are demand hot water systems, they say for oil as well. I do not know whether they're available in the state of Maine. <clears throat> I'm just trying to find the rest of my lecture here. Uh, do you want that PowerPoint, is that a PowerPoint that you want up on the, um, the screen? Um, well, it wasn't really in a PowerPoint format, so okay. let me just see if I can find it. So Energy Star estimates that the average family can save $100 a year if they switch to a demand hot water system. People heating water with electricity will save more money than people using gas for heating their water. Now another place, another data that I found said that if a family of four, if they're using electric hot water now, will save an average of $250 a year if they switch to demand hot water. And if they had a gas system, they would save $150 a year. So it's significant savings. <clears throat> and they say if you use about 41 gallons of hot water a day in your family, you can save anywhere from 24 to 34% of your hot water costs by switching to demand hot water. Demand hot water systems should last for over 25 years. Traditional hot water systems with a tank last about 10 to 15. Now, the only thing I would say, because I've had personal experience with demand hot water, <coughs> is we had two issues with our demand hot water, which we finally worked out the bugs, which was very good. One issue was we realized we have a well. <coughs> the first demand hot water system that we had got plugged up, and for a while they couldn't figure out exactly what the problem was, <coughs> but it turned out there was enough silt in our water that over time, through the little coils, the silt would build up. <coughs> so what they had, what they ended up doing is putting a filter on the water going into the demand hot water, and that seemed to have solved that problem. The other thing that was very interesting when we first set up our demand hot water <coughs> was that we had one shower in our house that it didn't work, and one shower that worked great. And we could not figure out what the problem was. <coughs> Luckily, my plumber was very smart. And he realized that what triggers the demand hot water system to work is that you have to have a certain flow of water. <clears throat> and the reason for that is you don't want the system to be turned on when there's a leak or a little bit of drip or you forgot to turn the sink completely off. So you have to have a certain flow volume in order for the demand hot water system to know to turn on. To try to save energy and costs, we had put <clears throat> um, low flow things on our showers, and we had different ones on the two showers. <clears throat> and one of them, when you turn the shower on, gave enough volume to turn the heating system on, and the other one was using less water, and it didn't go above the threshold, <coughs> so the hot water system did not know to turn on. So we had to actually take our shower head off and put in a different shower head, and then everything worked. So it was very interesting, just sort of look, you know, looking at the whole, the whole uh, thing. Any other questions you can think of? Are you happy with the demand? Oh, it's wonderful. Demand? I'd say the only thing I would say is it takes a little bit of time until you get the water. <clears throat> and I'm used to that by now. And I always tell people when they visit, because you, people expect just turn the hot water on, it's going to be hot. <clears throat> turn it on full blast, because it'll trigger it to turn on. <coughs> And then we'll come on, it just takes a, it takes about 40 seconds to get to the shower. And what kind of considerations did you uh, think about when you were deciding between a whole house and individual? Well, we looked, at the, we looked at the cost of the whole house versus the cost of the individual ones, and what sinks we would use it for, and that kind of thing. It just seemed like, for us, it made more sense to put one for the whole house. <clears throat> 
And it does, for me, it didn't really matter to wait 40 seconds. That might be a problem for some people. So that seemed to make the most sense for us so at the time. Lower, lower cost to buy one unit versus... It was lower cost to buy one okay. unit for the whole house for us and our system for the number of sinks that we have.